All right, folks, welcome back. Today is Tuesday, September 7th. As promised, back with another uh, Tuesdays with Nate. So I uh, just wanted to get you guys a quick update, talk about a few of the uh, pressing topics at the moment, and uh, go from there. So uh, we're at the end of a month, the beginning of a month, wrapped up August, had a good month. The team did a fantastic job as usual. Uh, and we are starting off September fairly strong as well, uh, looking good so far, and we will continue to push uh, those numbers. In the coming weeks, I'll have some uh, finalized reports, some stats, some KPIs for the previous month of August that we can go through and update you guys on, but so far, so good. Last month, we ended uh, 139 leases closed, new leases signed for the month. We ended up with 246 renewals. So again, 246 move outs that we prevented from happening, re-upped, uh, got them to stay in the property, renew that lease. Good numbers there. Two of the main KPIs that we're typically uh, tracking in the property management department. Also, days on market was good, held at uh, 19 days, days on market, which is still fantastic for our team uh, across the board doing a great job with that, getting the properties rented quickly uh, and keeping that vacancy time down. So just three of the quick uh, KPIs there from the previous month. We'll dive in uh, maybe next week on some of the uh, more in-depth uh, statistics about those numbers and we'll go from there. Again, pushing forward for a new month, September, looking forward to having a strong month as well. Uh, so far, so good on the leasing side. Looks like we're going to end around 150 to 160 uh, vacant properties getting rented for the month. So we will update you accordingly. Um, I had a question last week from an owner that kind of sparked what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, and essentially, it's a lot of the stuff that happens behind the scenes, you, the owners, you, the prospects, you, the uh, the clients, don't always know all those moving parts. And trust me, there are a ton of moving parts going on behind the scenes that our team is doing uh, with a lot of processes. So today I want to talk about one process in specific, uh, and that is the maintenance process. So an owner the other day asked, uh, you know, what happened with this work order? What happened? I saw this invoice. What you know? He had these questions and, and had no idea what we had already done and what we are doing on every single call that comes through to us uh, as a management company. So again, you guys got to remember at scale here with close to 7,000 properties in 13 different markets, we've got these systems and processes in place to handle all of these things that happen on a daily basis. And I told him, uh, you know, look, this is just a, a Wednesday for us. Uh, this is something that we handle day in and day out. We could do it in our sleep. We can do it blindfolded. This is maintenance is 24 seven, 365. It never sleeps. It will never go away. It will never cease. There's uh, things are always going to happen and usually the worst things are going to happen at the most inopportune times like an ac breaking on the hottest day of the year or a heater breaking on the coldest day of the year that's okay that's what we do day in and day out that's what our team handles so you guys can uh, sleep with your head on the pillow and not even have to worry about this this is what we do day in and day out so again 24 7 365 holidays birthdays this that weekends you name it we're handling maintenance um, so what does that look like behind the scenes? So I wanna give you a quick rundown of how it works. Number one, the work order comes in. The work order comes into our team. It can come in on the phone during uh, a live phone call during business hours. It can come in vo uh, via a voicemail that we check. It can come in uh, via text message, online on their owner uh, emails, uh, letters in the mail, snail mail, we occasionally get a letter with something on it. You name it, we get it, we put it into the system. Then this is where the, the, the behind the scenes part comes in. Our team actively troubleshoots and diagnoses whatever that problem is. If it's on a live call, we're gonna go ahead and have that conversation then and there. We're going to troubleshoot whatever the issue it, uh, it is. If it's something that can be easily fixed by the resident, that will save them time 
and the headache of having to wait until uh, wait for a while for something to get fixed, then we want them to be able to do it right then and there. For example, if you know electricity in a certain part of the house is out, we'll have you check the breaker. Here's how to check the breaker. Here's where to locate the breaker, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to troubleshoot and diagnose whatever the issue is that they that they have reached out to us to help them resolve. And if it's easily fixable by them, then we're going to encourage that for two reasons. Number one, get them taken care of quickly. If it's something that they can fix themselves, they won't have to uh, wait uh, for any uh, portion of time to get that item fixed. We want them to do that. And then number two, we want to save you, the owner, the cost of having to send uh, a tradesman out there to look at whatever the situation is. So troubleshooting and diagnosing. Then we are going to research whatever the issue is. Well, if it's an issue with an air conditioning unit, for example, we're going to look back and see, has there been previous work done on this air conditioning unit? Is this a new unit? What is the year of install, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to research and make sure that we're going back to a previous vendor that either installed or has previously worked on uh, whatever the issue is. From there, we're going to dispatch that to one of those vendors. We work with independently contracted uh, vendors, tradesmen, licensed, uh, and insured workmen that handle all of our problems. We don't have uh, handle all the, the work orders that are called in. We don't have anybody on staff swinging a hammer, nothing like that. These are all independent companies that we work with. Some of them have been here as long as I have, 15 years. Some of them uh, have been here for two months. So that's constant that we're hiring, uh, training, and looking for new vendors all the time to provide good quality and good um, affordable uh, work for our residents and for our owners. So dispatching from there, we have a software that all this is outlined in. We communicate back and forth with our vendors. Uh, it's for our team and it's also a good place for pictures as well, before and after pictures for those repairs. After we dispatch it, the goal is to push it through to completion as quickly as possible, to get the resident taken care of as quickly as possible. A happy resident means a happy owner. That means an occupied property. That means a long length of stay. That means uh, paying rent on time. That means everybody's happy. So that's the goal. Get the property taken care of, get the resident taken care of, and in turn taking care of uh, the owner, uh, you yourself, and your asset that's under our watch. So push that through to completion, get it closed out as quickly as possible. We want the vendor there. We want the situation fixed as quickly as possible. From the time that the resident calls in until the time that the job is completed, we want that to be as short as possible. Now, of course, some of those things take longer. It depends on the scale of the job. It depends on uh, if insurance is involved. It depends on if somebody's out of town or in town or the level of emergency, uh, uh, the um, priority level that that work order is. So, of course, we handle those accordingly and push them through to completion. After that, and this is kicker, this is uh, the kicker where we come back through and call the resident and perform a follow-up call. So we're doing two things here. Number one, making sure that the resident is taken care of because if we just take everybody's word for it, we might get pinched here every once in a while. If, if we just see that that work order has been closed, it's checked off, all the boxes are checked, uh, and we assume that everything is well, sometimes that may not be the case. So we call the resident to follow up, number one, to ensure their satisfaction, and number two, to check on the quality of work uh, completed at the property. So, and of course, rest assured, they are going to let us know, the resident is going to let us know uh, if the job has not been completed to their satisfaction, if they did a crummy job, if uh, something else needs to be done, or you know this part was finished but this part wasn't, this is a good checks and balance way for us to make sure and ensure that the uh, work is taken care of in a, in a good, timely manner. So, again, the goal of maintenance is to take care of the residents. Make sure that you're providing those quality of life essential services that uh, number one is you're legally required to do and then number two to make sure that the resident is enjoying their stay and will renew and will stay and will remain happy etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's a very important process after that the invoice comes through 
Uh, we pay our vendors weekly. We go through those invoices, make sure that they're checking all the boxes, make sure that the work has been completed, make sure that everything corresponds accordingly, and uh, close it out from there. And then wash, rinse, repeat. So that happens every day, day in and day out. Uh, hour by hour, hundreds of phone calls come in per day, uh, and we, we sift through them to take care of you, the resident, and your property as promptly as possible. So maintenance, very important, uh, important piece of the puzzle that I just wanted to give you a quick rundown, a little behind the scenes uh, peek at how we do it, the process, uh, and what that entails. So if you have topics you want to hear uh, me discuss further like this, some additional views behind the curtain, let us know. We will uh, be happy to go through them. Have a great week. Hope you kill it. And my apologies to Mark Anderson. We ran out of time. I will get him on here one day, I promise. Have a good one. Bye-bye.